stable in comparison. Uh, and it was very scary for me to learn these things. Now, um, Dylan and I stayed in a relationship. We tried to get married while he was away. Um, we had a prenuptial agreement drafted with his lawyer, Rebecca Zarnecki, and my lawyer, Nick Albuquerque. Um, we attempted multiple times to get married and we were prevented from doing so. Um, we don't know why. That's a violation of civil rights. The reason this is pertinent is because had the marriage been allowed, I would have been incredibly protected. And the lack of actual legal marriage left me in a space where I was uh, unlawfully thrown out of our home that we shared together. Um, my children live there as well. Um, and I've remained in a space of houselessness since that time. That was nearly five years ago. Um, I work, I'm normal, I'm functioning, I'm, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. I'm above average intelligence. Um, and it's incredibly scary to understand that I'm still in this situation five years later, but uh, let me explain how it played out. And this is all gonna be part of my podcast as well. Um, some of the more recent stuff I'm not permitted to talk about because the court system has put me under some sort of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they're not permitting me to discuss it, um, but it's very, very pertinent. It's, this is very intense corruption. Um, you know, and it has been this way for quite some time. So let me get back to it. Um, Dylan and I remained together and he was forced to involve himself in deals while he was in prison. Uh, the deals were if he did X, Y, Z, he would serve 3.5 years rather than 12 years concurrent. And he was charged with kidnapping um, and selling undercover officers fake drugs. Um, to my understanding, all of this was curated with intention, um, you know, and part of some larger, um, some larger goal, uh, specifically surrounding public corruption and fraud, white collar crimes. Um, so when shit got real, I stayed with Dylan the entire relationship and I sacrificed a lot to be with him as did, you know, my children were you know, very close and attached to him. Um, the last maybe six months of the relationship were very scary. Um, when Dylan got out and he had to go back to doing those deals, he began excessively using drugs and alcohol and became incredibly physically abusive toward me. Um, he started beating me up, holding me up by my throat and throwing me onto the ground and choking me and kicking me. Um, and there was just a lot of, of really bad stuff that was going on. Uh, when I went for assistance with regards to these issues, they began reframing them as if the abusers were my exes, the fathers of my kids, which is not true. Um, the abuser was Dylan. Um, Dylan was the one who picked me up by my throat and kicked me on the ground. And I threw a vase at him and missed. Um, you know, and there were some other things. If you guys are familiar with nitrous oxide, um, th and that's what makes this so corrupt, nitrous oxide, you have to get that chemical from a very specific place. Um, it's very expensive. It costs about $2,000 to obtain. He had it on hand like within 15 minutes. So he'd pick up the phone and boom, there would be a huge truck filled with nitrous oxide that would take two six foot plus tall men with muscles to carry, you know, a tank of this off of the truck and unload this. So there was clearly, you know, a lot of, of corruption going on. And when I went to parole for assistance, parole said there was nothing they could do, that I needed to go to 555 West Harrison, which I did. I filed paperwork for protection. And rather than hearing my case for protection, they granted him a case for, for protection against me. Um, and then, you know, curated this reality show and all of this other stuff to blatantly cover up all of the years of abuse that I have endured for the ultimate goal of having a quote unquote castle for my children to live in and, and I and for us to retire and, um, you know, our businesses to thrive. And that would be fitness businesses. Both of us were involved in personal training at the time. He through Nezim and myself through NCCPT. Um, and other businesses, marketing businesses. We were both selling renewable energy at the time and making very good money. Uh, we were on, on track to earn more than six figures our very first year together um, post-prison. 
uh, until the violence began. Now, David Shepard lost his job. It went in front of internal affairs and my claims were substantiated that he was sexually harassing me and extorting me, that he did force me to steal a computer of Jordan Lott and turn it in. And that case wrapped in 2019. Um, due to the lack of information or the inability to use the evidence that they had acquired because it was unlawful in the way that it was acquired. Um, since that time, I have been the subject of numerous smear campaigns on the internet and in real life. I have been stalked to my church, to my doctor's office, to numerous different jobs, um, to you know various places that I frequent. Um, the police have refused to pick up a case. Uh, I have been sexually assaulted three times. I have been jumped and stabbed by three women 11 times, bludgeoned by a man resulting in the need for staples in the back of my head. Um, and my vehicle was stolen and sold at auto auction. As I said, I, I have been reporting all of this to law enforcement for quite some time uh, with little to no intervention and no assistance. There's not been another detective assigned. I continue to keep track here myself um, in the hopes that in the in the near future, I know that we do already have the software. If you're familiar with ChatGPT or other forms of AI, I know that the software exists, that it can go through all of the content I've created, silence the um, nefarious attempts at rerouting the narrative, which occur mostly in the comments and in parody accounts. Um, AI has the ability to silence all of that and to simply listen to what I've reported and assist me in vindication and justice. Um, so I, I remain hopeful for that day. Um, during this, I met Xavier and Xavier told me he was taking me to a safe house that his brother, Carlos Montoya, who works for the ADA, was going to help me in having this case heard. Um, you know, ultimately, we ended up both being thrown into the street with no protection and uh, I became pregnant twice. Um, the first time my children, twins, um, who were uh born prematurely and passed away on December 26, 2022. Um, and the second time was Weston. Uh, Weston was born February 19th, 2024. Um, he is seven months, seven and a half months old now. Um, and we have only been permitted to see him for six hours a week since his birth. He stayed with me for three days in the hospital. And upon my time of discharge from St. Joseph's Hospital was separated from me as they claimed he was taken to protective custody and Xavier and I thrown back outside into the street. Um, we've gone in front of a judge. We've called 311. We've attempted to seek shelter. They've not assisted us in any way, shape or form after Tremont. Tremont is Selena the Traveler, which is a boutique hotel that was repurposed for the reasoning of being used as a space for people like myself. Um, Xavier and I were there for four months and promised that at the end of six month period, we would be matched our family, myself, my children, and my other, th my child Weston and my other three children would be matched with a townhome or an apartment to feed, uh, to meet my family's needs. After four and a half months with no notice, under an hour of notice, um, someone came to our door and said, tomorrow morning, everyone has to leave. You'll need to quote, self-resolve. Um, I got dressed, I was in a nightgown pumping. I was only four and a half months, five months postpartum. I was still pumping breast milk for Weston at that time. I got dressed and went downstairs. I asked the staff to please elaborate on what time we would need to be gone by as we had a visit with our son in Maywood scheduled for that morning. Staff told us, you know what, sit down here. Uh, refused to allow us back up to our room and then threw all of our things in an unorganized manner into garbage bags and threw us back into the street and said, self-resolve. Uh, we won't be helping you with an apartment. We've lost funding was their uh, reasoning. Now we've gone by that space numerous times. It's still filled with the same people. So it doesn't make sense. What's going on does not make sense. Um, We've gone to in front of the judge five or six times since that time. I've shared all of this with the judge. Uh, we have been numerous times. I mean, many too many times to count. We have been 
uh, lied about or blatantly subjected to fabrications with regards to reality. Uh, first and foremost, they are claiming that I did not receive, and I'm not allowed to discuss what they do in court, but I 100% am allowed to discuss the allegations against me um, that were made by the online harassers and the anonymous reporters to DCFS. That would be my prerogative to do, and this is my channel, so I'm going to, uh, but I'm not allowed to tell you guys what they're doing in court uh, per the judge's order. Uh, they've made allegations claiming that I am have not received any prenatal care, that I refuse to receive prenatal care. So they're accusing me of negligence. Um, they're making uh, allegations that I, I have untreated or undiagnosed mental health disorders and that I am not medically compliant. Also not true. They're making allegations that I am, um, what was the other one, Xavier? Just the mental health, the not having prenatal care, and what else? Um, um, I'm sorry, I'm doing something over here. Uh, I'm not, I, I'm pretty sure those are the only two. Now, I've already proven those to be false by submitting medical records and a testimony from my doctor. I've shared with you all the letter that my doctor wrote that literally states there is nothing wrong with me, that I'm a great mother, that in the 10 years he's been treating me, I've always been compliant and an active participant in my medical care, that I have uh, an immense amount of knowledge and expertise in my own diagnosing and in the treatment of anything that I've ever needed care for, um, that my only diagnoses from the past are PTSD, anxiety as a residual side effect of said PTSD, and ADHD, which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, which I've been under treatment of and diagnosed with since I was 18 years old. I'm 37 now, that's 19 years with this diagnosis. Um, magically, as soon as Dylan came out, that's when all of these other claims came for, to my mental health and began attempting to diagnose me with another uh, disorder that I do not have. Um, so it's been very interesting because I've proven, as I said, time and time again, that none of this is real, that none of this is true, that these claims that they've made have only newly surfaced since 2020, and that prior to that, never in my life have any, has anyone made these claims, that I've been having the same diagnosis since 18, that I accepted that diagnosis, and that I've been under treatment and care for that diagnosis since that time. My doctor even, as I said, took the stand and said, there's nothing wrong with Heather. Um, the state's attorney even took the stand, and, or not took the stand, but the state's attorney even verified on my behalf outside of court that um, with the state's attorney who is responsible for public corruption, uh, Wayne Jakowski, public corruption and uh, white collar crimes. Uh, they did verify everything that I said with regards to David Shepard, that investigation and uh, all of the other deals and things of that nature that were supposed to have resolved in 2019 that are still affecting my life today to this very day. <clears throat> so everything I said was true and it was prov proven. Um, on top of that, it's now my responsibility somehow with all of the adversity that I'm currently facing and still parenting my children to the best of my ability, sending them food and groceries and calling them numerous times a day on FaceTime and, you know, um, being, you know, as present and kind as I can uh, to all of these allegations and, and anonymous uh, forms of harassment. There's, there's just been an overwhelming amount of slanderous uh, defamation and uh, slanderous, you know, um, verbalizations and narratives and rhetorics that have been coming out. And it's almost like a new one every day. They accused me of giving myself a wire hanger abortion with the twins. I would never do that. My children are my entire life. You know, whether I'm prepared or not, I believe that you will find a way. God blessed me with children. No man blessed me with children. God made me a mother. God decided that that was my job, um, you know, so it's been intense and now after they threw us out of Tremont and they started denying a shelter again. So I have a caseworker named Barsha, Barsha Shaw through Lutheran Social Services who has been a third party in calling 311 on a regular basis and continuing to get case numbers and they just keep closing them and saying there's nothing available which we know is not true. Um, so now I have documented verifiable evidence that not only during the duration of my pregnancy was I calling for shelter, 
and having prenatal care and following up with multiple doctors and completely compliant medically, uh, but also that there's another third party who is a social worker who can testify to the fact that not only have I been doing so, she's been doing so on my behalf. So it'll be very interesting to see how far this corruption is permitted to go, you know, and I know for a fact that we have the AI um, already to mitigate a lot of this, to put a lot of this to rest. Um, I was ordered to participate in some sort of a course for drug addicts, people who are addicted to drugs. Um, and I told them I'm not addicted to drugs. I've never had a drug addiction in my life. You know, I, I'm not really sure what to say or how to feel. But they said, if you don't do it, you can't see your child. Um, so I said, all right, well, then obviously I'll do it, which is another form of extortion. Uh, so I did that. It was for marijuana. Um, and so I took drug tests every week or two weeks. Um, and they were, of course, always negative because I, I don't have a drug problem. <laughs> I have a housing problem. Um, so we, I finished that last week uh, and just found out very, very few days ago, I believe two days ago, uh, Friday, actually, that I am done, that I don't need to take that course anymore. And they sent me a certificate of completion. Um, so that class is my Tuesday class. So that, that was really great to hear, which is why I wanted to use this opportunity. We're in the conference room of my church, uh, the church that I'm a member. Um, and this is actually where I've reserved this conference room for another, I believe, four weeks. And so I wanted to make use of the time to record all of my FTRs and update everyone on what's been going on ever since that time. Um, and so that's what we're doing here today. And I'm very grateful to have that opportunity. Um, I do have some things to do this afternoon, uh, you know, before heading into work. And so I'm going to keep it to the, you know, 1 p.m. timeline, which gives us about an hour. Um, but it's been incredibly exhausting to keep track of everything that's taken place. And I truly hope that um, the AI that is rolling out will make that much easier. Um, I did meet someone who works for an artificial intelligence company who charges approximately $6,000 to run four minute scans on the entirety of the person's medical record, prescription history, court documents, and other things. And these are quality assurance scans and they have multi-purpose. You know, um, this person uses them primarily for defending companies in, um, lawsuits or potential lawsuits for instance if someone were to take a medicine and they end up with cancer or something like that because of taking that medication um, the ai technology can comb through the person's history of their medical record um, and <clears throat> decipher other possible causes of the cancer to protect the company from lawsuit um, well, it can be used in the same way to look for corruption in medical records. For instance, if there is someone who has gotten their medical records crossed, if it's a paper record, uh, like I have, I have one from 2020, I'm sorry, 2019, I believe, um, where my chart and a man's chart were combined on accident. AI has the ability to read text or handwriting and weed out that information and say there's a high likelihood of either mistake or corruption in this chart because of x y and z so i'm working together with this company i was promised uh, by the actual ceo i was lucky enough to meet and have a conversation with about ai that they would waive the six thousand dollar fee and actually review my, my medical records for me for corruption so that's what we're working on now it's called an administrative audit um so that's very exciting there's also a lot that's been reported to different parties that, you know, have connection to this court case, which is non-criminal in nature, but do that doesn't matter, uh, you know, if they're using my children in the same way they've been for the last 10 years and now so publicly to extort me into various or strong arm me into various actions, um, you know, I need all of the definitive proof of this that I can get. Um, 
And so a lot of these reports that say th things that vary, you guys, they've literally said that I was uh, charged with smuggling 15 grams of cocaine into Cook County Division 6. Never happened in my life. I've never, ever smuggled any drug anywhere. Um, I don't even, I don't use cocaine. I don't have any history with it. I've never been a cocaine salesperson. I, I don't have that history. Uh, they said I was charged with kidnapping. Never, I have no criminal record. I wanna make that clear. I have some traffic things. I have no criminal record. So the AI that they're using and the software model that they're using in the healthcare integrations can very easily be moved over to FOIA a bull records. All of this is, you know, very easy to sort through. Um, and the truth will be revealed. It won't be a matter of human testimony anymore. It will be a matter of exact paperwork that will um, decrypt and tell a very truthful story, a, a story that human testimony won't be able to untell. Um, so I'm very excited for that. Um, but yeah, those are just a few of the allegations they've been made that have been made against me. And my thing is this, none of it's true. But even if that were true, even if, first of all, if I were charged with smuggling 15 grams of cocaine into Division 6 Cook County, I want to I want to mention numerous things. Number one, county jail is a non-contact visit where you are separated by glass with your significant other. So there is no risk of smuggling um, at all whatsoever. So that's number one. Number two is, um, I never did that. <laughs> number three is kidnapping. I'm sorry, what? Uh, number four is they named um, various things that I supposedly did, such as, um, what was one that they named? Uh, dangerous drugs. There's no charge called dangerous drugs. I, I don't know what that means. So now I have to obtain manually all of the actual copies of the background checks and things of that nature. But even if I did do those things, you guys, which I did not, what does that have to do with my ability to care for myself or my son? And if you truly think I can't care for myself or my son, why do you have me sleeping outdoors on a sidewalk, right? Why do you have me carrying around all of my belongings? Why are you treating me like an animal? If you believe so strongly that I am incapable why aren't you assisting me with disability? Why aren't you helping me with a safe place to live and assisted living or things of that nature? Now, I first and foremost am here to tell you there's nothing wrong with me, nothing at all whatsoever, but that is their argument. And so if that is their argument, why are they not addressing that argument? None of this makes sense. It's incredibly corrupted and we need AI pardon me, we need AI to intervene sooner than later. Um, and also, this is called the Back from the Dead collection by Profusion. Look at how cute. So adorable. Um, these brushes were $4.99 at Ross, by the way. And shout out to uh, Barsha for that Ross gift card. Thank you so much, Barsha. That was really sweet of you, and I very much appreciate it. Um, but yeah, you guys, uh, we need the AI to intervene as soon as possible because the longer and more blown up this story gets, the more difficult it becomes to clean up from the back end. And what do I mean by that? We can prove the truth. We've proven it time and time again. But weirdly, in society, a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times, lies are more outlandish and entertaining and fun to hear than truths. And so my reputation, my business, my reputation as a parent that subsequently and residually affects my ability to parent and to do business has been highly affected. Some group of people have decided that it's funny or engaging to lie about me a lot. And it has already affected in a tremendous way my children, my bank account and more. Um, you guys know that I paid for a Cadillac CTS all by myself. My very first auto loan, I satisfied that loan through Capital One. And less than months later, my vehicle was stolen from a storage in Valdosta, Georgia and sold at auto auction without my permission. 
Um, there's been so much money that's been lost. Uh, I've worked very, very hard for the things that I've had, um, you know, and I've gone through a lot for those things. Um, and I am just very eager for the truth to be revealed. I don't keep secrets uh, about myself. I live in a way that um, you don't need to hide. Um, and I will be addressing all of the claims on my podcast. I'm, you guys know I have created multiple podcasts um, and they've gotten a lot of attention. And as soon as they started getting too much attention, they were taken offline. So we're going to restart that project um, we're very excited about it. We're in negotiations right now with Fort Knox, um, trying to get a recording studio space there. If we can't do it there, I'll do it in my storage locker. You know, I really don't care uh, as long as I'm able to get the story out as honestly and truthfully as I can um, for the purpose of, as I said, you know, keeping matters together and honest and truthful and organized. Um, because it's just, it's in living this repetitive and redundant cycle of abuse, I can tell you I've, my number one prayer to God has been, God, please make me speak when it's time and silence me when it's time. And I do believe that, uh, that's what's happening. And I do believe that that's how I will be vindicated by using my own voice and proof. Um, so it's been a very difficult time. Um, my son, Wesson, literally was stolen from my bedside and given to a woman I had never met before in my entire life. And the court system in the United States of America, Illinois, is aware of this situation and actively participating in this. Um, it's not okay. It's completely unlawful and ethical. Uh, and unbearable at times, but that's what's going on. I'm doing my best to remain positive. Um, a lot of you have asked what's going on with my modeling, statement modeling and fashion modeling. And um, I would love to continue creating photo shoots. Unfortunately, it's been um, nearly impossible because I'm my own attorney. Uh, I do have a standby attorney available for consultations, but I've had to prepare my own arguments, my own lines of questioning, uh, go through the, you know, various um, uh, uh, exhibits that have been submitted as evidence, create my own exhibits, um, you know, go to the courthouse a number of times. There's also a lot of fraudulent activity going on at the courthouse. Um, it is on public record at the courthouse that I was married to the father of my youngest daughter, Alexis, which is not the case. Um, people have tried to punish my exes as if they're the ones who were abusing me when in actuality uh, the abuser was Dylan, who was also my best friend at the time. So it was a very, very confusing situation. Um, and one that I cannot wait to put behind me. Um, a lot of people say things like, you've got to move forward. And I, I say to them, yeah, I'd love to. But when I'm being forced in court to discuss body camera footage from 2019 and give context to that footage, it's nearly impossible to move forward. Um, when my young infant child is being separated from me because of that body camera footage, it becomes ignoring it, not an option. I'm being quite literally strong armed into discussing that body camera footage and the events that took place at that time in my life. Um, AI has already come to a place where the things like the slander and abuse that appear in these comments are blocked. I've gone out of my way to choose word filters, including the tent emoji, the tooth emoji. Those have already been blocked from my channel a number of times. So I'm curious, AI, what's going on here? Why are you permitting those types of defamations and uh, bullying and harassment to come through on my comments when I'm discussing things like this. Um, it's also worth mentioning that uh, when I was selling content, 
I was never subjected to harassment. It was only ego stroking and kindness and uplifting and support. So it's all very, very, very uh, interesting to see. There have got to be um, repercussions coming um, for those who have been involved in this and in permitting this type of abuse to continue. Um, I eagerly await that day, vindication and justice. Um, I have decided that I'm going to start sharing the messages that I've been channeling. Um, and so I'm going to do so live on TikTok um, with just reads and updates um, that I'll be doing every few weeks, um, you know, for entertainment purposes, for enlightenment purposes, for educational purposes. Um, and if you have any questions about that, you can feel free to let me know uh, in my inbox or by email. Um, the email address that I'm using is coco, a GoPro solo production at gmail.com. So you guys are um, free to email me there if you have any questions. Um, that's kind of the update. Uh, we are literally still being denied our human and civil right to shelter in the United States of America. Um, I do believe that this is, you know, at this point in time, very easy to acknowledge as, you know, being the truth of what's occurring. Um, if there is any sort of uh, legal uh, assistance that can be provided to uh, address those issues, it would be highly valued at this time, uh, you know, and that's about it. Um, we, we really don't desire any sort of abuse or, uh, you know, goading or, um, you know, making larger of the situation than it is in a way that makes us look like we're doing something wrong, uh, we don't, you know, and we have not been the problem uh, at all. So just like there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who are living in government projects and subsidies, um, that we qualify for that same type of assistance and we want to know why we're not getting it, um, you know, and what is standing in the way from law enforcement exploring the rape, um, the bludgeoning. There's actually a man who went to prison for bludgeoning me over my head um, and he served 18 months in prison for doing that. Um, but I've been entitled to something called Marcy's Law, um, Marcy's Rights. Uh, that is a financial um, payout for being the victim of a violent crime being subjected to anything violent like uh, being bludgeoned or stabbed or raped and that has happened to me on a number of occasions yet I've not been permitted any sort of Marcy's rights which I can you know provide you guys proof of you can google about it if you'd like uh, I just want to know you know what is it going to take and if we're here to gauge humiliation and pain and all of those things, then the only way to really complete your studies would be to also run tests for pleasure and joy and satisfaction. And I've not felt those things in many years. So that's about it, you guys. Um, the good news is I've completed one of the court ordered services. I've jumped through that hoop. I've jumped through the rest of the hoops. There has been a tremendous amount of blatant corruption. I have gone above and beyond to contact the state's attorney who specifically handles public corruption, Wayne Joukowsky. Um, I've also made my every effort to keep my other state's attorneys, whose names I cannot mention because they're working this case, uh, informed of what's going on um, with the housing issues and all of the other issues. They have not done anything to assist in any way that I know of. Um, and they just continue to, you know, make it incredibly difficult for me to parent my children, uh, specifically my seven month old. Um, DCFS already took to the stand a long time ago, many, 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 many moons ago and told everyone in, involved that they, quote, had no question as to my ability to parent my son or willingness. 
and that was set six or seven months ago already so this is exhausting and it's illegal and it shouldn't be permitted to continue and the fact that I cannot go on my own social media pages and openly discuss and share documents and make proof of what's going on in an effort to find legal assistance, sponsors, donations, that in itself should be illegal. That in itself should point to corruption, intense corruption. Um, so if you are a lawyer with regards to free speech, please contact me um, and you know let me know what we can do. I do need assistance uh, and the ability to file several civil lawsuits starting first and foremost with my vehicle that was stolen from me and sold without my permission at auction after I received a letter in writing stating my vehicle would not be released to anyone other than me. Um, so there are a number of profitable uh, legal endeavors that we can pursue. Um, and I am very, very much um, eager to get started on that process and regain stability with regards to housing. Every other part of my life is normal. I have a pastor at my church, a reverend who took the stand and said that I'm normal and, you know, that I actively participate and interact with a large parish of people with no questions as to my sanity or ability to complete tasks, etc. As I said, my doctor has taken the stand and testified for me in a number of ways. Um, so, so many people have taken the stand and testified for me, um, which is why, you know, like I said, I want to share what's actually going on and what the court is doing because it is incredibly corrupt. Um, in my opinion, most of the people involved in this case should be uh, serving time, um, you know, and big time. There is no dollar amount that will rewind the years and allow me to go back and raise my children. Um, there is no dollar amount that will make my daughter 14 again instead of 18, or that will make Alexis 7 instead of 11, or that will make Lewis 12 instead of 16. Four years and counting with no direct assistance, being held in a tent, forced to urinate in a cup, waking up with my period, with no access to a restroom, bleeding down to my knees, not being assisted. This is the type of thing that you hear about but never believe. And I don't know how to stress enough that every part of this is entirely provable. There is record of all of this. So, um, Thank you guys very much for being here and sticking with me. I'm going to leave it at that for today. That is the update. It's October 8th, 2024. This has been ongoing since 2019. And if you include the time that, uh, you know, the internal affairs and all of that since 2015, the promises that those officers made to me that if I did not do what they said, they would take, my, take away my children or see to it that my children were separated from me. Um, that did take place. And I do have court ordered custody of my children. Despite all of that, I'm still separated from them. Uh, you know, so as I said, lawyers, please, anyone who can assist, please do so. Uh, email me at Coco, a GoPro solo production dot at gmail.com. Um, and thank you guys so much.